Hi, my name is Pam Denny. I'm the designer and architect of the Maximo BI or Business Intelligence Tools. And today's presentation will look at the new BI or Business Intelligence features in Maximo 7.6, specifically regarding Cognos reporting. So let's get started and explore the features. First, to recap, Maximo provides a number of BI tools for you to transform all the data that Maximo collects and then to be able to analyze it. And that's where the real value of Maximo comes into play. The available Maximo tools that are provided all out of the box are shown here. And there's a couple of interesting things about this slide. First off, the tools are shown in a hierarchy order. So basically what I mean by that is that the level of analytic capability increases as you move up the hierarchy. So for example, if we look at QBE, which is exporting a list tab results to Excel, that gives us some very nice base analytic capability. But as we move up and go into the Maximo BI packs and Cognos reporting, we're gonna see a much, much deeper dynamic level of analytics. The other thing that's very interesting is all the tools shown here in the middle, almost every single tool was significantly enhanced in Maximo 7.6. So we've made major, major feature updates. But let's specifically talk about the two tools on the top, Cognos reporting, and then the Maximo BI packs. And the BI packs are simply reports and workspaces delivered in Cognos reporting. So to talk about these tools, the first thing that we wanna do is look at what value we have. Well, I always like to break things into buckets and there's four key areas that you can receive significant analytic value on if you use Cognos reporting. First is the licenses. Maximo 7.6 is the first relief release where you are directly entitled to utilize the Cognos BI reporting tools. And this is a one-to-one -one entitlement, meaning that if you have 50 Maximo users, all 50 of those users are entitled to use the Cognos BI server products. Another key point is ease of use. In Maximo 7.6, we have added additional access points to Cognos. We are entitling you to newer and a greater level of Cognos tools, which will make it easier for you to access and analyze the data. And we're reusing Maximo components so you can streamline and minimize your administration and development tool and focus on the analytic capability. Additionally, metadata creation is huge. Metadata is the base of any Cognos report and we've strengthened the types of metadata or packages that we can create from Maximo using the integration framework. And we've also added new features specifically related to security. And then in the delivered content, Maximo 7.6 again is the very first Maximo release where we've delivered significant levels of Cognos reports and workspaces. This is what we refer to as the BI packs. And you're gonna see a number of different things, <clears throat> excuse me, all related to the delivered content in terms of reports, workspaces, packages, and KPIs. So let's drill into this value in a little bit more depth and we'll start, oops, I'm going the wrong way. I apologize for that. We'll start with our Cognos licenses. When we look at the Cognos licenses and the Cognos part numbers that you would see on Passport Advantage for Maximo 7.6, we can again break them into two areas. The largest component of Cognos that you'll be using is the Cognos BI server. And the BI server contains many individual Cognos products, things that you'll hear a lot about like Cognos connection and administration Report Studio, Query Studio, and also the two tools that I mentioned that are new, Cognos Workspace and Workspace Advance. Additionally, as shown here on the bottom, you are entitled to other Cognos tools. Those tools include Cognos Insight, Lifecycle Manager, and Dynamic Query Analyzer. You may or may not utilize these out of the box, but we wanna make sure that you are aware that you are entitled to these. But what I'm really gonna focus on today is the BI server components. 
So let's talk about some of those BI server components. Sometimes when we look at the tools, it becomes overwhelming. So I always like to, again, break things down into individual components and think about all the different report users that you may have in your environment. So if we start again, always looking at a spectrum of users with a level of different uh, skill sets and also significantly different business needs, we often break our report users into these five components. We have an application user who may use one or two applications in Maximo. They have a um, very guided experience in Maximo, meaning because they only access those small number of applications, they like to do the same things all the time. Our business user, on the other hand, he's got a stronger level of Maximo skill sets. He explores the Maximo data at a deeper level. And then in the middle, we have our sweet spot with our power user. The power user is the person who wants to use every single application in Maximo, wants to access the database from the back end. He really has a very strong technical skill set. And then that's followed by our developer and administrator. So if we look at each of these users, again, utilizing their skill sets along with their job functions, the Cognos tools that they marry up to is shown over here on the right. Our application user would use a tool like Cognos Workspace. Our business user might be interested in using Query Studio. Our power user, he would be have the skill set and the need to use Cognos Workspace Advance. Our developer with our most technical skills, he'd probably want to use a traditional enterprise tool like Report Studio. And then our admin is going to use Cognos Admin. Well, let me highlight a few of those uh, tools for you, starting with our developer. Again, this is a very, very strong skill set user. So what he, we would recommend he use in Cognos is Report Studio. This is a web-based product. There's no separate install. And this is going to give him the deepest level of development features and functionality. However, it will take him some time to learn if he's not familiar with the tool already. And we would recommend that he take a Cognos training course to pick up this tool. But there are many, many other tools available to our user with the Cognos BI server entitlement in Maximo 7.6. And one that I mentioned is for our power user with Cognos Workspace Advance or CWA. This is a phenomenal tool. You can pick this up if you have that strong power user skill sets in just a few days. Um, I create a number of different reports. I love this tool. Every time I access it, I find out something new, but it's very intuitive and it has the ability and it le leads you through the experience of creating powerful reports with lists and charts in a very, very short amount of time. So again, that's Cognos Workspace Advanced entitled or intended for our power user. Our next user is our Query Studio person who may be a business user. Now, Query Studio doesn't have the depth of the functionality that Cognos Workspace Advanced does. And also as a word of caution, this is a tool that Cognos is retiring. But if you're looking for a tool and not that you don't make a heavy investment in, but may give some of those initial features to your users, this is a great tool to start with. But again, want to make sure that everyone knows that this will be the last release that C Query Studio is including in because Cognos is retiring this product. And then this all comes together for all our users with the Cognos workspace. Cognos Workspace is basically a blank palette or a space where we can bring in multiple reports. Those reports could have been created in Report Studio or Cognos Workspace Advance. And as you can see here on the bottom, this is an example of one of the workspaces that we deliver out of the box. And this contains four individual reports that are then displayed. So again, that's the entitlement to Cognos, those main BI server products that we talked about, Report Studio, Query Sp Studio, the new products, Cognos Workspace and Workspace Advance. <clears throat> Excuse me, now let's talk about some of the other new features that are available in Maximo 7.6, including the ease of use and the metadata creation. Well, with Maximo 7.6, we really took a step back and we said, how do people want to access Cognos reporting? 
Well, there was the traditional method where you can come into Maximo and maybe you're in work order tracking or purchase orders or inventory and you want to run a Cognos report. Well, you can launch to Cognos from any of those applications. But maybe on the other hand, you're a power user and this power user, he really just wants to analyze the data. He doesn't want to necessarily get into the individual records in Maximo. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. So what this user now has the capability is to sign directly into Cognos. So he doesn't necessarily have to launch from Maximo to Cognos using the silent login. He can access the Cognos URL, put in his Maximo username and password, and directly begin working with Workspaces or Cognos Workspace Advance to analyze that data. So really nice new access points are available. The other thing I want to highlight with Cognos is the metadata publishing. As I mentioned earlier, metadata is the basis of everything in Cognos. That's what we use to create any report, whether that report's created in Report Studio or Query Studio or Cognos Workspace Advance. Now you could go into the Framework Manager tool of Cognos and create that metadata manually, but that's a very time consuming process. So what we want to do is we want to capitalize on Maximo's existing features, specifically with the integration framework. And if you're familiar with Maximo's integration framework, much of it is based on object structures. Object structures are a collection of metadata objects that we can publish or move over to different systems. So what we do in 7.6 is we take those object structures, specifically report object structures, and we publish them to Cognos, and that becomes our metadata. So how do we do that? Well, here's an example of what we did in Maximo, previous versions of Maximo 7.1 and 7.5 when your entitlement came through TCR or Tivoli Common Reporting. We took a report object structure and here's a simple example where my parent is work order and we had some child objects of asset and job plan and we utilized the integration framework and we published that over to Cognos and that became a really solid base for our developer to then begin creating a report as shown here. So this is the metadata package and we publish it here to Cognos and that streamlines the report development. But the problem with that was, is when we published it to Cognos, the user could have access to any data in those tables. There were no site restrictions, there were no set restrictions, there were no org restrictions. So what we've done in 7.6, which is one of our main new features, is we've added new site, set, and org restrictions. Well, how do we do that? Well, when we come in 7.6 and we go to publish the report object structure, behind the scenes, Maximo does an evaluation of each object, and it determines what type of security filter it may need to have applied to it. So for example, on work order, we probably apply the site filter. On asset, it's a site filter. On job plan, it might be an org filter. But Maximo does all this work for you. So then when the report object structure is published over here to Cognos, and I as a user go to run that Cognos report, I will only see the site, org, or set filter or data that I have access to. And here's an ex example in SQL to show you this in more detail. So again, in previous Maximo releases, when we published a Cognos, we basically gave you a select star from work order. But now what we've done is we've appended it with the where clause, where if I'm user Fred, I'm only going to see the data from work order that's in my site or I'm only going to see the data in asset that's in my site or in job plan where which is in my org. And again, this is all done behind the scenes for you. And I wanna highlight at this point that there is a whole series of videos on the YouTube channel, which will show you step-by-step -step how a report object structure is created, how it's published over to Cognos, and how you can see these individual site restrictions. Well, let's move into the last component of our delivered content, and that is what are the reports, workspaces, packages, and KPIs that are delivered out of the box? So oftentimes when we refer to the delivered content in Maximo 7.6, it's called the BI packs. 
And the BI packs are simply a name for the Cognos content that we deliver in Maximo. And there is an example shown here. But again, to give you an understanding, let's break that content down. The content is made up of a few different things. First are the reports. There's two types of reports that we deliver, a standard report, which has a parameter page, and you can schedule and email this report, and then a report that is specifically dis designed to be displayed on a workspace. And then we have two different types of workspaces, application workspaces and trending workspaces. To look at the reports in more detail, here's the example of the standard traditional enterprise report. We come into Cognos, we see a request page, we input the values, and then the report is displayed. And then the other type of report that you will see is again the workspace report. These don't have a parameter displayed. The workspace reports will only be available within the workspace. So what are these workspaces? As I mentioned, there's two types, application and trending. And you can see the difference right away if you look closely. In application workspace, you'll see different filters or parameters on the top. And our trending workspace is going to have a different view of the metric over time. Again, a greater view of the application workspace this is a work order metric where we're looking at the different metrics by critical asset. And the critical asset is the tab over here. And if I simply change on the different tabs, I can view the same metric, for example, my backlog or my overdue work orders. Instead of looking at it by critical asset, I might can see it by classification, work priority, or work type. Why do I want to do this? We, we have so many different users in our business environments with so many different needs. What might be so important to someone is the critical asset backlog, but maybe what's more important to a supervisor is looking at his backlog by work type because you want to make sure that he's get his EM work orders under control. Again, here's a breakdown of an application workspace. In this case, we're looking at our asset metrics and we can look at those same metrics. Again, what is my average maintenance cost? I could look at it by classification. I can change a tab and I can see a view by critical asset or I could change a tab again and see it by failure class. Let's switch gears and look at our trending workspaces. Instead of those different tabs looking at my metrics by different views. In this case, I'm going to look at my same metrics, but I'm going to look at them by different time period. So imagine how important this is. I can now look at my overdue work orders and I can see that in a weekly view, but I could also see it in a monthly, quarterly, or yearly view. And how important is that? because this now gives me the ability to see is my performance improving or degrading over time. Again, here's our trending workspaces and where we can see a varying time period. I absolutely love the trending workspaces. Here I'm looking at my backlog work order and look at this. This is those graphs that you can show your management. You can start to highlight what the value of Maximo is. And all of a sudden, I can see those phenomenal trends, my backlog, what happened here at the end of the uh, 2013 quarter four. All of a sudden, I had this huge uptick in my backlog work, but then I have this very positive trend going down. And the same for my overdue work orders. It's a really nice trend going down. And that's what I want to show my management team so I can show that I have control of this business and that Maximo is helping me maintain my assets in my company. A couple of interesting points about our trending workspaces is the data source for these. We all know that we can create a SQL statement to get a number of the overdue work orders today, but how do I capture that information over time? Well, what we are utilizing is new features in Maximo 7.6, specifically the KPI templates. We created a number of KPI templates from that, created the individual KPIs, and then started 
running them or scheduling them so we can store all the information in KPI history. And now once that information is in KPI history, what Cognos does is just goes into the KPI history table and displays those values. So it's not re-executing SQL every time it runs this report. It just simply uses its data input as K KPI history. And this is what I mentioned about using components in Maximo over and over again. Create a KPI once in Maximo and utilize it multiple times to get the most value from it. So with the BI packs or the content that we deliver in Maximo 7.6, I want to highlight that there are four ma main areas that the content is delivered in. They're delivered in work order management, asset failure management, asset management, and inventory management. And you'll see gr lots of great metrics in there, everything from your overdue work to mean time to repair, mean time between failures, uh, cycle count, or not cycle count, excuse me, um, inventory turns, etc. A lot of great information. So before I leave, and I want to recap here with some of the information that I've talked about and where you can find more detail. We have numerous reference materials in Maximo 7.6 for Cognos. We have a number of documents. We have a number of video recordings. And we also have a number of blogs. So the first thing that you can do is look for all the Maximo 7.6 Cognos report, recorded demos on the IO2 YouTube, YouTube channel. Uh, specifically, it's under the playlist of IBM Maximo 7.6 Cognos. As I mentioned, there is a whole series of playlists on the metadata creation, on the application workspaces, trending workspaces, and there's also a series of recordings how you can get started with creating your own reports in Cognos Workspace Advance. And here's some of those examples shown here, where we talk about how you create them and then they're actually placed on a dashboard or a workspace. There's also a number of reference docs in addition to the install guide. There's a license guide, and the license guide talks specifically through all the products that you're entitled to use. Also, some best practices or recommendations for configuring your environment. So, for example, have a separate replicated copy of the Maximo database to point your Cognos reporting um, environment to, excuse me. Uh, and then the feature guide talks all about the metadata publishing, the BI pack content, what are each of those reports, what are the workspaces, and then the same thing for the trending workspaces, which you can download from the ISM library. So with that, I'd like to thank you very much for your time. And again, this was an overview of the new Cognos features and entitlement in Maximo 7.6.